Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dear students, uh, welcome back. We are going to continue today our series about sympatholytics. Last time we talked about their main sites of action and the mechanism of action of alpha blockers. Today we are going to continue this series by talking about their pharmacological actions, clinical uses, adverse effects, and contraindications of these alpha and beta blockers. Okay, so uh, number one, uh, uh, we are going to start with the alpha adrenergic blockers, what their pharmacological properties. Uh, uh, number one, the cardiovascular effects, the effect on the heart and blood vessels. Uh, before I talk about that, I just remind you to please, whenever you are talking about antagonist uh, blockers, you have to first remember the agonist effect. You have to go back to the normal uh, sympathetic response. Okay, so if you are under stress or fight or flight response, what would happen? And then when you use the blocker, mostly the opposite would occur. Okay. So here on the, uh, uh, regarding the blood vessels, the normal sympathetic response is to go cause vasoconstriction of uh, 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 arterioles and venules, right? So the opposite will be vasodilation, right? Which will decrease the lower, uh, the peripheral uh, vascular resistance and hence the blood pressure. Uh, they also can prevent the pressure effect of usual doses of alpha agonists, specifically the uh, mixed agonists such as epinephrine. So epinephrine has effect on alpha receptors, which would cause vasoconstriction on the blood vessels, and has also effect on the beta-2 receptors, which will cause vasodilation, right? So if I block the alpha receptors by the alpha blockers, what would remain is the beta-2. Normally, the overall effect of uh, adrenaline, as we said before, is a decrease in the vascular uh, peripheral resistance. Uh, but, or vasoconstriction, if you in inhibit the receptor at which the norepinephrine, or norepinephrine exerts its vasoconstriction effect, What's remaining is the just the beta-2 effect, and beta-2 will cause vasodilation. So here you are converting the pressure effect, the vasoconstriction induced by epinephrine, into a vasodilator or the pressure effect, and this is called the epinephrine reversal. Okay. Um, they cause reflex tachycardia and orthostatic hypotension. Let's take them uh, one by one. Number one, non-selective alpha blockers cause tachycardia if blood pressure is lowered because of two things. Number one is the non-selective alpha blockers would block the alpha-2 presynaptic receptors, right? And these presynaptic alpha-2 uh, alpha receptors would uh, inhibit norepinephrine release, right? But if you inhibit them, there will be a release of norepinephrine, which will stimulate beta receptors in the heart and increase the heart rate and contractility. This will cause the tachycardia again. So now the alpha-2, presynaptic alpha-2 receptors, normally without epinephrine, without norepinephrine, without anything, normally the, as we said before, norepinephrine, when it is released, it will go back and activate the alpha-2 receptors which will inhibit further release of norepinephrine, right? If you inhibit these alpha-2 receptors by these alpha blockers, what would happen is that this effect is not going to occur, which means uh, epinephrine release will be more, and this will stimulate the beta receptors in the heart, which will cause tachycardia and also increase in the contractility. The second effect will be the paroreceptor reflex, reflex, which is, as we mentioned before, the, the, the decrease in blood pressure 
induced by these drugs, we mentioned these, there is a increase in blood pressure, will uh, uh, kind uh, of inhibit the pyroreceptors, and this will uh, cause uh, send a message to the vasomotor center in the medulla oblongata, which will activate the sympathetic nervous system and inhibit the parasympathetic nervous system. This again will cause tachycardia. We remember pyroreceptors, before we talked about them, when we talked about the epinephrine, right? We said there is a reflex uh, bradycardia, right? But here it will be reflex tachycardia, the opposite way, okay? So epinephrine calls reflex bradycardia, here it will call reflex tachycardia, okay? Okay, orthostatic hypotension due to antagonism of uh, sympathetic nervous system stimulation of alpha receptors. So normally, the sympathetic nervous system, as we said, will cause vasoconstriction, right? If you don't have this vasoconstriction, so you cannot maintain blood pressure in the upright position when you try to stand up, right? And this will cause venous pooling in the periphery and orthostatic hypotension. In addition, this is on the veins level. So this is the venoconstriction because the veins, they maintain blood pressure because they decrease the pooling of blood in the uh, extremities, specifically in the uh, lower part of the legs. Um, and uh, the, uh, regarding the arteriole, also usually the uh, sympathetic nervous system usually con constricts the arteriole uh, uh, in the leg, which contribute to the normal orthostatic response. Both of these will be inhibited and this will cause orthostatic hypo hypotension. Uh, regarding epinephrine reversal, uh, just this is a little figure that shows the uh, normal response of this. Remember pentolamine? Remember last time we talked about it? It's non selective, yes, non selective alpha blocker. So, this guy normally, because we need to measure these two, if you need to measure these two with each other, you have to measure this alone and this guy alone, and then you measure the, the two guys with each other. So, the first player is pentolamine. Pentolamine is alpha blocker, okay? So before you use uh, pentolamine, this is the blood pressure reading. You have to take first the baseline uh, uh, blood pressure and heart rate. And then look here after pentolamine, the blood pressure decreases and heart rate increases, as we mentioned before, okay? So regarding the alpha blocker, they cause reflex tachycardia. So this is kind of a revision to the previous lecture, right? And also they cause uh, high tension, or exactly they. Uh, are used as antihypertensive. Then uh, epinephrine alone. Okay, again the baseline pressure. Look at after after using epinephrine, the blood pressure increases, right? And the heart rate increases. This is normal because epinephrine stimulates beta beta one receptors in the heart, which will cause uh, uh, increase in the heart rate and contractility, of course. Uh, now we can use uh, both drugs with each other. Okay, now I start with pentolamine. Pentolamine will do what? Pentolamine will inhibit the alpha receptors, right? Will inhibit alpha receptors, generally speaking. So what's remaining for epinephrine is what? It's just the beta-2 receptor, right? So beta-2 receptor is, will cause vasodilation. Activation of these receptors will cause vasodilation so there will be decrease in the blood pressure, right? So here, look here, the numbers. And there will be a reflex a tachycardia, or you can say this is the, the decrease in the blood pressure, but tachycardia actually occurs due to the epinephrine itself activation of the beta-1 receptors, okay? And the heart, of course. Uh, other effects, um, again, remember the normal, uh, responses to the sympathetic nervous system on the level of the eye sympathetic nervous system activate the dilator papillary muscle which will cause meiosis so the opposite will be uh, because it will cause midriasis i'm sorry cause midriasis dilatation of the eye pupil okay or widening of the eye pupil so uh, if the sympathetic nervous system cause midriasis the opposite will be what just meiosis right because you are blocking these receptors alpha receptors in the eye in the eyes or in the radial muscle exactly of the iris or the constrictor papillae, I'm sorry, dilator papillae muscle. So dilator papillae muscle is inhibited, so then will this or would occur, which is the myos. Again, the blood vessels in the nose also, they usually are vasoconstricted by the sympathetic nervous system if you inhibit uh, their uh, alpha receptor. This will cause a nasal congestion or stuffiness. 
uh, again, uh, on the liver intestine, you see sympathetic nervous system inhibits the, the spinal motility. Uh, if you use alpha blocker, the, uh, uh, so we said, again, sympathetic nervous system inhibits the spinal motility, right? So if you use alpha blocker, the spinal motility will increase. And uh, this is because the inhibition of the relaxant sympathetic influence diarrhea may occur. Uh, sodium and water retention. They can cause sodium and water retention. This is because okay, they will decrease the renal blood flow. Okay, because they cause vasodilation. So this will decrease the renal blood flow. The renal blood flow, if it decreases, this will activate beta 1 receptors in the, in the juxta glomerular cells, glomerular cells, and this will activate the RAS system, which will cause. Uh, RAS is the uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system. This will cause at the end uh, sodium and water retention. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, regarding the bladder and the prostate, they are specifically uh, alpha 1A receptor subtype is expressed at the base of the bladder and the prostate. So if you use alpha blockers, they cause the resistance of the flow of the urine. Uh, to the flow of the urine and so the patients who has benign hyper hypertrophy they usually have uh, urinary retention so if you use these drugs the alpha blocker they will facilitate the urination uh, and uh, will be helpful to these to these patients um, again um, remember again the normal sympathetic response of the vas difference is uh, the contraction of the vas difference, okay, which will result in uh, ejaculation, right? This coordinated to alpha receptor if you in inhibit. So instead of ejaculation, you remember we say sympathetic nervous system induces ejac ejaculation, uh, whereas parasympathetic nervous system induces uh, erection, right? So this ejaculation, the usual response will be inhibited by uh, alpha blockers, specifically times you uh, when we talk about individual drugs. Uh, they, yeah, these drugs are used in uh, treatment of, specifically treatment of hypertension induced by or in patients with pheochromocytoma. Just as a reminder, pheochromocytoma is a tumor in the adrenal medulla that uh, uh, secretes a high amount of norepinephrine and epinephrine with subsequent uh, severe hypertension. Here you can use phenoxybenzamine. I'm reminding you, uh, last, like last time we talked about it, we said phenoxybenzamine is an irreversible alpha blocker, okay? Irreversible, so it binds to the alpha receptor, does not dissociate, so it will be uh, very effective, the, the effect will be very prolonged, so it will be helpful for these, these patients. Uh, they are uh, used in benign prostate hyper, uh, hypertrophy, okay? As we said before, specifically, tamsulicin, these drugs have uh, alpha-1 blocker activity, tamsulicin has alpha-1A, so it's kind of, more selectivity regarding these uh, receptors in the, uh, in the prostate and the neck of the bladder. So they are helpful in patients with benign prostate hypertrophy. Uh, they are used in uh, hypertension like prazosine, terazosine, doxazosine. We remember last time we said uh, ocine uh, means they are alpha blockers. They are used in management of hypertension. They are used also in migraine like ergotamine, probably the most effective drug for uh, moderate to severe migraineous attacks. Okay, so side effects are expected, palpitation, postural hypotension, nasal blockage, uh, diarrhea, uh, fluid retention, inhibition of ejaculation, we already talked about these, but this is just kind of a conclusion of the adverse effects. Then uh, we now switch gears to uh, beta blockers. Okay, the prototype is probranolol. Okay, remember this group, the beta blocker, we said the suffix uh, lol is kind of uh, distinct in these uh, drugs. So uh, it's the prototype to which any other beta blocker will never discover a new beta blocker you compare it with propranolol. It has more effect than propranolol, less, whatever, similar. Okay, It's non selective uh, beta blocker, it inhibits both alpha 1 and alpha 2. There are agents which are beta 1 selective, including mutoprolol, atinolol, acibutrolol, isoprolol. Okay, they are selected for beta-1. <clears throat> Some of these uh, beta blockers have what's called intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. 
These drugs are what's called uh, partial agonists. So, in, so they are actually, they are not full antagonists. Uh, for antagonists or pure antagonists is propranolol does not have any capacity to activate beta receptors. But these drugs are kind of partial antagonists or partial, partial agonists. Actually. The exact uh, uh, term is partial agonists. So if the agonist effect is like up here and the antagonist effect is down here, there's something in the middle or a little bit above the zero level. So if any drug plays in this area, we call it partial agonist. So these drugs are partial agonists that have intrinsic sympathomagnetic activity. The, uh, so, but their effect, of course, is less than the full agonist, isoproteinol, isoproteinol. So isoproteinol will be like up here, uh, propranolol will be down here. These drugs will be kind of here, have some little intrinsic uh, sympathomagnetic uh, activity, can a little bit activate the, the receptor, but not as high as the isoprenadine, the full uh, agonist. Uh, some of these drugs, including uh, propranol, acetabutrol, carbidiol, have some brain stabilizing activity or called local anesthetic activity, uh, similar to actually the uh, lidocaine, the, the normal prototype uh, local anesthetic drug. Okay, uh, usually beta blockers do not affect alpha blockers. However, there are some of these drugs, including labetalol, carbidiol, fusimbulol, they inhibit alpha 1 receptor in addition to the beta uh, receptors. Uh, some of the uh, beta blockers have vasodilating properties, which will add to their antihypertensive effect by two mechanisms. Number one, we already talked about it today by inhibition of the alpha receptors, which will help in vasodilation. Number two, by increasing the production of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide we talked about it before, before nitric oxide causes vasodilation. It, again, I'm reminding you, is similar to the GS protein coupled receptor. It activates the, uh, the uh, but instead of adenine, just replacing with guanine. So nitric oxide activates guanylate cyclase. Guanylate cyclase converts GTP into uh, cyclic GMP, which will activate protein kinase G, which will uh, cause vasodilation. That's why these drugs, Nervibolol, has a very uh, rapid effect. Uh, the Pharmacological actions, okay, take propranol as a prototype drug. On the level of the heart, it's expected again, 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 again. Please remember the normal sympathetic response of the heart or the, or the, the, the normal specific response of the heart to uh, normal response of the heart to the sympathetic nervous system, which will uh, uh, be uh, the normal one is increasing heart rate, increasing force of contraction, increasing cardiac output, right? The opposite of that will be decreased heart rate, decreased force of contraction, decreased cardiac output, because as you know, heart rate times the stroke volume okay, will give you the cardiac output, right? Uh, however, the, the, don't expect that if these drugs are used like for arrhythmia or whatever, the patient's normal tensive, the, the patient does not have hypertension, there will be no significant effect. But if the patient is under sympathetic activity, stress, or running, or you know any fight or flight response, uh, these drugs will have these effects. They will decrease the heart rate, force of interaction, cardiac output. Uh, one of the good things about these drugs that's the reason for these drugs could be used for heart failure. They decrease cardiac work because now we are decreasing the heart rate and force of interaction, so the oxygen demand is decreased. Then uh, the high part, of course, they are antihypertensive drugs. Okay, on prolonged administration, uh, blood pressure gradually falls. Okay, because they decrease cardiac output, as we mentioned. And the total regarding total peripheral resistance is kind of a little bit intriguing. In the uh, beginning, there will be a little change because on one hand, these uh, beta blockers they increase the heart rate. They increase. I'm talking about the blood pressure here. Okay, they increase the heart rate, they increase the contractility. They, this will increase cardiac output, this will increase blood pressure. But on the other hand, they, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these, these drugs will inhibit this response, right? Will inhibit this response of the sympathetic nervous system, which usually cause increase in the heart rate and cardiac output. So a cardiac output will decrease, uh, which is okay, which is good. The second thing, they will inhibit the beta-2 receptors, which will cause vasoconstriction. So the final will become, this will nullify the effect of this. So the final will be a little change in the blood pressure, okay? However, with continued use, the resistance of blood vessels gradually adapt 
uh, to the chronically reduced uh, cardiac output, so the total peripheral resistance, which was the issue now. Because here, I'm inhibiting the beta-2 receptors, which would, sorry, or, or would cause vasodilation, so the predominant effect would be only on the alpha receptor, which would cause uh, vasoconstriction. So the, the blood vessels will kind of get adapt or, uh, to, the, to this uh, continuing uh, vasoconstriction, and total peripheral resistance then will, and also adapt also to the reduced cardiac output, total peripheral resistance will decrease, and then both systolic and blood, systolic and diastolic blood pressure will decrease. Other uh, mechanism that contribute to foreign blood pressure, we already talked about that decreased renin release from uh, the kidney because these drugs are beta blockers that they inhibit beta one, they inhibit the uh, production of renin by the juxta glomerular cells in the kidney, okay, and inhibition of RAS, so inhibition of sodium water retention. Uh, because as we said, uh, they also inhibit the, uh, the beta receptors, the beta receptors, the presynaptic beta receptors which here cause in uh, stimulation or they induce the, uh, the, the, the release of norepinephrine. If you inhibit this, this uh, presynaptic beta receptor, they will inhibit the release of, uh, norepinephrine, of norepinephrine. Uh, central action, they reduce the sympathetic outflow, which usually causes increase in the heart rate and cardiac output finally. On the respiratory tract, remember the, the Bronchi, they have uh, beta-2 receptors. Okay, usually, again, the sympathetic response of the bronchi is to have bronchodilatation, right, through the beta receptor. So now adrenaline activates beta-2 beta receptors and the bronchi, this will cause vasodilation, right? If you inhibit beta-2 by these drugs, the beta blocker, this will cause bronchoconstriction. That's, that's why these drugs are contraindicated uh, specifically in patients with uh, COPD, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or asthma. Uh, the beta-1 blockers, actually, they have some advantage. So that's why beta-1 blocker use is prevailing nowadays, because they, uh, they have selective activity against uh, beta-1 receptors in the heart, but not uh, on the beta-2. But however, there is nothing absolutely selective. They can, if you increase the dose, it will, they, or even in a small dose, they can have some little effect on the beta-2, not as beta-1, of course. So, uh, um, so they could be used with, with precaution or better avoided in patients with uh, bronchial asthma. Even these beta-1 receptors, they have so many classes of testing classes of antihypertensive drugs you can use uh, in asthmatic patients. Uh, on the level of the eye, the beta uh, blocking drugs will inhibit or will reduce the production of aqueous humor. Aqueous humor, we say it contributes to the intraocular ocular pressure. And so if you decrease the production of aqueous humor, you are decreasing uh, 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 intraocular pressure and you can help with uh, uh, treatment of glaucoma. So I said before, I'm, I'm recapping here, I'm reminding you, parasympathomimetics are good for glaucoma and sympatholytics are specifically beta blockers are good for glaucoma. Uh, the uh, metabolic effects, they increase the uh, triglyceride level and LDL, DL, HDL ratio. Okay. Uh, they inhibit glycogen. Remember the uh, level of glycogenolysis is said adrenaline or sympathetic nervous system activates glycogenolysis. Okay, because I need fuel, right? I need glucose. So, uh, so here, this will inhibit the glycogen loss in the heart, kills muscle, and liver. But they uh, reduce uh, carbohydrate tolerance by decreasing insulin release. Uh, so these patients uh, will have carbohydrate uh, intolerance, specifically in uh, pre-diabetic patients. The membrane stabilizing or acetic activity, even though uh, propranolone is as effective as lidocaine, but it's not used for this purpose because it's irritant. Okay, uh, but this activity claim to contribute to the antiarrhythmic effect of propranolone. This will help in the level of antiarrhythmic effect. On the level of the uterus, we, sympathetic nervous system causes uterine dilatation uh, through the beta-2 receptors. So they, these drugs will block the relaxation uh, of the uterus in response to isoprenaline or selective. Isoprenaline, you remember, it's non-selective beta agonist. Activates are beta 1, 2, 3. Okay or selective uh, beta-2 agonists, okay? 
So they will relax, they will block these effects. Isoclinarine, uh, if you remember, we said uh, iso means similar, so it will activate all the beta one, two, three, everything. So, but the normal uterine activity is not significantly affected. Use this, uh, it's easy now. We can use them in treatment of hypertension, angina pectoris. We said, we, we remember, we said they will decrease the uh, uh, heart rate and filter activity, and this will decrease oxygen demand. So, they will help in angina pectoris. Because they decrease heart rate, they could be used also to, uh, for cardiac arrhythmias. Uh, congestive heart failure, this is kind of little intriguing because the, in one hand, they decrease contractility, which will aggravate the situation in uh, uh, heart failure patients. But research have said something fantastic about that. We'll see in the next slide, inshallah. Uh, they are also helpful in, uh, in patients with thyroid causes. They control the symptoms like palpitation, nervousness, uh, tremors, uh, severe myopathy, and sweating without significant effect on the thyroid gland itself. Uh, <clears throat> uh, migraine, the propranolol is one of the most effective drugs to, for chronic migraine prophylaxis. And glaucoma, we said, like thymolol and other beta blocker drugs, they inhibit the production of acrosomers, so they decrease the intraocular pressure. Okay, they use the adjuvant in angular closure glaucoma. Let us talk about the research here. Uh, this is uh, research have been done in 2006, which shows uh, actually the same we expected in the beginning. This is metoprolol, okay, and this is standard therapy. The baseline is the time and the x. I'm sorry, the uh, I'm sorry, the x-axis uh, is the time uh, or the duration, and the y-axis is the left ventricular ejection fraction, which is kind of a, a readout for the cardiac function. So the more of this y axis the more contractility the more ejection fraction the more contractility okay so in the beginning if you see metoprolol decreased the ejection fraction this is expected because it inhibits heart rate and uh, decrease heart rate and inhibit contractility again so now the situation is worsening now right so uh, i'm sorry this is the normal I'm, I'm sorry this is the baseline at zero time here you see in day one there is a decrease in the ejection fraction then after uh, one month, they were like similar, no significant difference here. But look at after three months, the metoprolol increased the ejection fraction, means it's helpful for uh, uh, heart failure patients. Actually, the name of the paper here is kind of uh, interesting. Beta blocker, uh, beta blocker in congestive heart failure from contraindication because of that to indication because of that. Okay, so these drugs, are now used. Um, the, actually, the exact mechanism is most well known, but remember we said they inhibit the ton receptors in the uh, glomerular cells to inhibit the RAS system, which will inhibit sodium water retention. They inhibit binding of uh, norepinephrine uh, and epinephrine to uh, the beta receptors. Uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, they have mitogenic and pro activity. So this will be deleterious to the cardiac muscle. So these are just the uh, proposed Propose the mechanisms for that. Uh, adverse effects in bradycardia. Remember, the normal sympathetic nervous response is increased heart rate, the opposite tachycardia. Okay, about resting heart rate may uh, be even response to about 60 uh, beats per minute. Carbohydrate uh, tolerance may be impaired, as we mentioned, for lipid profile uh, because, and then so because total triglycerides. Uh, and LDL ratio is increased. This will enhance the risk of uh, coronary uh, artery disease. Tiredness and reduced exercise capacity because of the decrease in heart rate and contractility. Cold hands and feet because of the prevailing activity of the vasoconstrictor alpha receptors because I'm, I'm closing the vasodilating beta 2 receptors. On the level of CNS, they cause uh, forgetfulness, depression, sedation, and sleep disturbance. Uh, precautions and contraindications uh, include uh, rebound hypertension. Whenever you, this is a precaution, whenever you stop these drugs, you have to go gradually. So you have to be do gradual withdrawal. Otherwise, there will be uh, rebound hypertension. This will worsen angina, of course, because now there's hypertension, there's increase in heart rate, there's, there will be increase in oxygen demand. This will hurt or aggravate the angina and even, even uh, sudden death could occur. They are contraindicated asthmatic patients because I said 
uh, they uh, have a beta 2 receptor in the lung, which uh, normally cause bronchodilation. They are contraindicated by a partial or complete heart to block. Heart to block means there is, you know, in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the con in the conductivity of the heart, okay, start, which starts with the uh, sinoatrial node, uh, the, the, if there is a block in the conduction, this, this is called heart to block. But then if you add to that uh, uh, the uh, negative chronotropic effect of these drugs means the, uh, the effect of these drugs that decrease heart rate, this will be aggravated, which could lead to cardiac arrest. Uh, that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed my lecture. Thank you, and uh, please enjoy and say Subhanallah alhamdulillah, Subhanallah alazim, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.